When you look at uh, whether he has to be replaced or not, I look at the macro level what we have achieved under his leadership. While I may not agree with the far to left policies, I recognize the things that has been achieved under his leadership. That's Liberal MP Chandra Arya on this show just a few moments ago, expressing his support for the Prime Minister amid inner turmoil in the caucus. Now today, CTV News has learned that a number of Liberal MPs plan to confront the Prime Minister next week at their Wednesday caucus meeting. After days of organizing, they plan to ask the Prime Minister directly to step aside from the leadership of the Liberal Party. So how will the Prime Minister respond to this latest push? Let's bring back the front bench. Saeed Selvam, Jamie Ellerton, Marika Walsh, and joining us is George Soul. He works with Syntax Strategy. Thank you all for being here. George, let's start with you on this one. The fact that there has been now this new movement, and it's seemingly way more public and way more organized, they're going to present to him at caucus their grievances and tell him to step aside. The NDP is no stranger to this type of uh, caucus issue in the past. How do you think the prime minister needs to respond to this? Well, I think the first thing is this is proof that liberal MPs know how to read polls, um, <laughs> if not a little bit slowly. Uh, I, I think if you look across the country, the number one issue in politics isn't the economy. It's not uh, foreign interference. Even it's anybody but Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think what we need to see what happens is if these caucus members actually have a plan. I mean, we're starting to see them build a backbone. Right. And But a lot, often this happens where caucus will say they're going to say something, they're going to do, they have a big turnover, but they have no plan on what to do. So they'll go up, maybe someone will go to the mic, they'll look for their friends behind them, and all of a sudden no one's standing behind them. And, and then the prime minister gets to stick around a while longer. I, so I guess we'll see what happens. But I think it is getting to, or it's gotten well past a point, where the prime minister needs to accept that... Um, you know, when your caucus turns on you, cabinet turns on you, your staff turns on you, the voters turn on you, it's probably time for you to step aside and let someone else take the helm. But for now, it seems like, Marika, the caucus is, uh, sorry, not caucus, but um, that cabinet is still on board. We haven't heard any cabinet ministers come out yet. Um, but at the same time, when we heard Chandra Arya there say, uh, and he was telling me during one of the breaks that, look, he says he doesn't think that this is a number that's really over 20 at this point. Well, 20 is a big number. Yeah. Let's break it down, right? Half of caucus is either in cabinet or a parliamentary secretary. That leaves about 60 or 70 people. If of that 60 or 70 people, the true backbenchers, 20 to 25, put their name on a letter saying Trudeau can't win, he needs to step down, mm -hmm. that is actually a significant amount of people. I don't know that that's what's going to happen. Those are among the numbers being floated. Um, I think there is a real question, even among liberals, of for some liberals, haven't seen the letter, haven't heard about the letter, right. except in the media. Um, but I think, without a doubt, over the last sort of few days, it has appeared to gel, and it has appeared to become more serious from the MPs I've spoken to, not less serious. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, PMO is skeptical about how big this number is. They do not believe that it's more than a handful or two. Mm -hmm. Uh, if that's the case, then they're they're in a different ball game. But um, if if after a month in which they have not been able to move the needle, after they got that time, they bought that time for themselves um, at the Nanaimo caucus. Right. Then they lost LaSalle and Marthe Verdun, the by-election in Montreal. They have two more by-elections that they have to call this fall. Mm -hmm. So if things are already going so much worse four weeks, five weeks after Nanaimo, it's hard to see how the rest of the fall goes for them. Yeah, and especially when you consider what that caucus meeting will look like, Saeed, because we have heard that it will be a number of MPs who are sort of designated, that they feel comfortable enough to take the microphone and address the prime minister directly. Do you think that the prime minister needs to respond in, in, I, let me rephrase the question. How does the prime minister need to respond to them to basically either assuage their fears or really quell this revolt? Well, look, regardless of the number of MPs that are either putting forward a letter or actually going to ask the prime minister directly, the fact is that this has made national and international headlines. So this whole idea of getting the prime minister to step down or the prime minister having lost the faith of some of his caucus members is now a big vulnerability that will 
carry and follow him into the next election should he continue to fight that next election. So it becomes a very big problem, not just for the prime minister, but also for the PMO. So, you know, a few weeks ago, um, Andrew Bevan was appointed as the uh, campaign director to try and quell some concerns from caucus. And we didn't really see that move too much of the needle. So it's going to be very hard response-wise to say that there is some particular grand plan or some sort of path to victory that the prime minister can fight at this point that would make such a huge difference. I think the only sort of option for him at this point, especially given the fact that this is such a big story, is for him to, to potentially sh listen to the caucus members, no matter how many caucus members that is, and also listen to some of the polls. But Jamie, he's been unwilling to do so, even asked a number of, of occasions, uh, even as recently as, as the, earlier this week. Uh, and he said, no, he plans on, on you know, leading this party into the next election. Yeah, I think what you're kind of seeing here is that inertia is ultimately the prime minister, the current prime minister's best friend. This has been simmering under the surface now for quite some time. There's been kind of when there's smoke, there's fire kind of bursts out like we just saw with Vashti Capellas' exclusive reporter on ctvnews.ca uh, earlier today, Mike. At the end of the day, though, when you talk to liberals, they don't look excited. Of course, cabinet ministers are going to say the report the prime minister, cabinet solidarity. Uh, but when you look at their faces, like they practically look like they're in Taliban hostage videos saying they support the prime minister. No one's out there enthusiastically making the case for Justin Trudeau. I think if Justin Trudeau actually wants to turn this around. He needs to come up with a real actual plan that gets buy-in and says, here's what we're going to accomplish over the next month. Here's how we're going to do it. And uh, maybe demonstrate some kind of mea culpa and contrition as to how he screwed up to get them into this place. But this kind of like issues management day by day, game of telephone tag and hoping that like they have enough to carry the day. It's worked so far, but this is not clearly not going away. But George, is it too late for that? Is he too late to come up with a plan that will make anybody happy at this point. I mean, Jamie just said, you know, this is what, how we're going to attack it in the, in the next month or so. Is that really going to, uh, you know, quell any of this? Well, I think that's the real question, right? And, and, and the answer has been so far, uh, they have no ability to change course at all, right? Yeah. It's just for over and over again, as this stuff started a year or a year and a half ago, we heard, oh, Canadians just aren't hearing us. And then it was, oh, we need to be more clear to Canadians. And then it was Trudeau unleashed. Um, which, frankly, people want Trudeau caged, right? Um, and, you know, and, and you, the point about not having folks enthusiastically support is huge. I mean, you had Mary Ng come out because she's on the plane with the guy in Laos, and nobody else is, is enthusiastically really coming out and saying, no, I stand behind my leader. They'll, they'll say, yes, I'm not going to be a mutineer. But, you know, you've got, you've got one cabinet minister... Uh, jumping to the Quebec Liberals, mm. which, by the way, you're not jumping into a cushy job there. No, at all. Um, you had Seamus O'Regan, a really long-time good friend. I'm not saying he doesn't have legitimate reasons, but he's reading the writing on the wall saying, I'd rather go take a, a good job rather than stick around and lose this election. So cabinet ministers might not be speaking out against them, but they are leaving him. Yeah, and Marika, just in closing here, I mean, you heard Chandra Arya was like, look, the economy's picking up, things are going to start to turn around. But, it, I mean, I think the basis of that is that there's time to try and convince people. Well, and, and some people argue that the Liberals can't put forward that convincing of people that pitch for the next four years until closer to the election. That's sort of one of the reasons why some people say we haven't heard anything since Nanaimo. Um, I think it's all eyes on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If it is actually only a few MPs who speak out, it's a whole other ballgame than if there actually are in the double digits right. MPs saying for him to quit. We just don't know yet where that will go. I think why some Liberals are so skeptical is they've heard this this show before, and they've heard rumors of letters before, and it has never come to pass. We'll see if this time's different, and that will sort of set the stage for what's next. Yeah, if there's a different ending, if people actually stand up. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Marika Walsh, George Soule, Jamie Ellerton, Saeed Salvam, thank you all for being on the front bench.